Hello, good morning Stagecraft class. Um, I hope you all had a happy Easter. It was a great time for our family, um, even though it was a very different Easter, but we certainly celebrated the risen Lord. And anyway, it's time to continue uh, our uh, final design project. First of all, thank you all so much for sending me your play analyses. Um, I got those and am in the process of grading them. I should have the grades up today, uh, so check that out and, and, uh, and I'll have some notes for you as well. Uh, some things to think about. Um, for those of you that are wondering, I'm sure all of you are wondering, what's the next step in the process? Normally, um, on this day, what we would be doing if we were on campus, what I would have you do today is take a tape measure, and we'd be going over to the theater, the Howard Payne Theater, and we'd be measuring the stage, uh, measuring every aspect of the stage, where the doors are, how um, big the proscenium is, how wide the proscenium opening is, how tall, we would be measuring where the curtains are. Um, we'd be measuring what we call extreme sight lines, center line, all of that good stuff. You'd be taking a bunch of measurements and recording them because the next step um, in your design process will be to have a ground plan of the Howard Payne Theater. Um, so you need to start with a bare stage, just a bare ground plan of the Howard Payne stage. Now. We're not on campus and we can't be doing that. So um, it's gonna work a little bit differently. I will be sending you the measurements that you'll need and you'll be needing to recreate your own Howard Payne ground plan and we'll be working on that. So this is kind of a major step. Um, obviously, if you're gonna be designing the set for a play, any play, one of the main things you have to know is what is the stage that this play will be performed upon? Right? Where is it going to be performed? You're obviously going to have a different ground plan for a play at the Lyric Theater or at the Brownwood High School Theater or at the Howard Payne Theater or at Mims Auditorium. They all have a different stage set up and so they require different ground plan aspects. Um, so that's why this is the first step, the next step in this process. Your play analysis, you've got that done, way to go. The next step is to look at the theater in which you're going to be performing this play. For the purpose of this class, it will be the Howard Payne Theater. So what you had, the next step for you would be to make a ground plan of the Howard Payne stage, but it's gonna work a little bit differently. So I'm gonna be sending you uh, the measurements so that you know the size and all of that. Um, I have on window capture here, um, you can see um, the Howard Payne ground plan. So that's what this is if you can't recognize it yet. Over here on the side, this box here contains all the information that one would need to know uh, if you were going to be staging a play in our theater. When we have plays come, like guests come and perform on our stage, like for CUTF, this is the document that I send them so that they can see all the information that they would need to know in order to put their set on our stage, okay? Um, now I've said this before, but I wanna say this again now. This class, Stagecraft, is not a design class. If it were, and we're gonna backtrack through some of the things here after I introduce this. If this were a design class, this is where we would have started at the beginning of the semester. Uh, but it's not a design class. Here's the reason why the design, the design is a part of this class because you as a state in stagecraft you as a stage technician need to be able to read and understand architectural drawings for the stage right and that includes being able to make them um, so some of the information i'm going to be sharing with you today is to help you understand what you're looking at when you look at a drawing for the stage what's the difference between a ground plan and an elevation view What's the difference between a rendering and a model, right? What do we mean? What do these words mean? What is the set line? What is the center line? Um, what do those mean? What does a little number inside of a circle mean? What do these little circles with X's mean? All this stuff. What are these squiggly lines? What's that mean? What are these bars? Um, all of that stuff means something 
that a theater technician, a stage, someone who's trained in stagecraft, should be able to look at this document and understand it all. When I send this document to the professors and the, and the theater technicians at other universities, they look at it and automatically know what all of this stuff means. You may be looking at this and like, well, first of all, it's too small right now. I will zoom in in a second. You may be looking at this like, I have no idea where to even begin here. Wait, I recognize, okay, maybe these are stairs. Is this the proscenium? Okay, this is the back door and it's starting to come together. These are curtains. So we'll talk through all of this stuff. As I go through this, I wanna backtrack a little bit to cover chapter seven and chapter eight, and then we'll talk a little bit about chapter nine. Um, again, if this was a design class, we would start in these chapters. Um, so in the past, I have taught, just as a special studies, a class just in design. If you're interested in that as an elective, please let me know uh, because I enjoy teaching design uh, as a class. It's different than stagecraft. In stagecraft, we're mostly doing this so that you come away with an understanding of drawings for the stage, how to read them and understand what they mean. That's a big part of stagecraft. So um, anyway, uh, I want to answer one question. Laurel asked me, and um, I had not responded to the email because I intended to answer it in uh, the video with everybody. Uh, Laurel asked me, what is the program we're going to use to make our ground plan? Again, this is not a design class. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'll be okay. Uh, this is not a design class. The program I'm using is Microsoft Publisher, which don't tell anybody that uh, because it's not a design program. It's a. It's not even. It's hardly even a drawing program. The reason that I use Publisher is because it's on every computer on campus. Now, this might be a problem, so I need you to let me know. If you do not have Microsoft Publisher, all right, you're gonna have to find your own design program, but any, really, any drawing program will work. I use Publisher because it's so convenient for transferring files. Uh, and this is an introduction to design, all right? Just the bare essentials, the bare minimum of like understanding. Um, if this were a design class, again, we would go much further in depth and we would use real design programs, real um, stage drawing programs that exist, what, what are called CAD programs, CAD, uh, Computer uh, Architectural Design Programs. This is not that, but Publisher is very widely available and you can draw stuff on it. Um, okay. So in my publisher document, let me just start with how I get started on a ground plan. First of all, I will go file, new, and I'm gonna go to more blank page sizes. Oh, you can't see this on your screen, that's weird. Hmm, it's not showing you what I see. Oh, here we go. All right, uh, I'm gonna make a new document, but I'm gonna create my own size, right? So I need to, create a new size. Even if you're not using Publisher, almost any drawing program, even like just Microsoft Draw or whatever, you'll be able to do this. And you need to make a large size uh, uh, canvas. It can't be eight and a half by 11. While I'm talking about the size of the page, let me briefly introduce you, if you're not already familiar with it, with the concept of scale, scale drawings. A scale drawing means that the sizes are all relative and exactly the same, only at a smaller size. The scale that, let me back up to my drawing here. Okay, this drawing that you're looking at here, this is in half inch scale, half inch scale. What that means is that in this document, every half inch equals one foot. Right? That is half inch scale. If this were at quarter inch scale, that would mean that every quarter inch was equal to one foot in real life. So this is a scale drawing, a scale ground plan of the Howard Payne Theater and it's in half inch scale. You'll notice over here that I actually put the words half inch scale. Let me get over to my box, my info box. 
half inch scale. There it is right there. Nicholas Ewan, HPU Theater, half inch scale. Um, it tells you when you look at the document what scale uh, you're looking at. Um, and all that information right there. Okay. If this is at half an inch scale, right, that means, um, I'm just going to tell you right now, our proscenium opening, so the, the size of the opening of the proscenium right here, is 32 feet, right? If I took a tape measure and into the theater and I measured the size of the opening, it's 32 feet. So in the drawing, how many inches would that be? This is a Dora moment. <laughs> where she asks a question, she waits for you to answer. How many inches? It would be 16 inches. So the, the space, I, I almost pointed to it with my finger. <laughs> the space, uh, the space from here to here needs to be 16 inches. Okay, and it is. Uh, I'll show you how I can measure that. Shapes, I'm going to introduce a rectangle here. I'm going to start here and go over to here. All right. And I will show you on format auto shape that the size of this is 16 inches. I didn't get it right on the mark there, but 15.97, 16 inches, which means at half an inch scale that in reality that opening is 32 feet. Um, okay, cancel and delete that box. Okay. So starting off, I want your ground plan to be in half inch scale. Let's work in half inch scale. Uh, you'll notice here, I want you to look at this measurement. Stage right wall to stage left wall is 72 feet. What that means is, let me zoom out. View, 10%. That means that from this wall to this wall is 72 feet, okay? How many inches is it? Is that on the page? If in real life it's 72 feet from wall to wall, how many inches is that on the page? 72 divided by 2 is how you get that number, and that's how many inches it would be, which is 36. 36 inches on the drawing is the size of that, 36 inches wide. So when I go to file new, oh, and also the stage here, let me just say real quick, the stage depth uh, is 24 feet. So that's 24 feet there. So when I go file new, new document, more sizes, and I'm going to create a size, it needs to be more than 36 inches wide, right? Because I, I need uh, room around it for my information box and stuff. I'm going to suggest you go with 40 inches by 25, yeah, 25 inches. 40 inches by 25 inches, oh, that's really, really wide. Let me go 30 inches. <laughs> uh, super wide. Maybe 30 inches in. Let me go, yeah, 30 in, 40 inches by 30 inches. Uh, so when you make your new doc, oh, you can't see this window on the screen. Dang it. Okay, I will just tell you because it's not showing you uh, on the video what I'm seeing on my window. I'm in to create a new size. You want to create a document that's 40 inches wide by 30 inches tall. Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to print this out on a piece of paper. You'll have to shrink it down to ever print it. But when I open it on my computer, I will be able to see that it's at the right scale. So 40 inches by 30 inches will allow you to work in half inch scale. So I've created a new page size here, 40 inches by 30 inches, new. I'm going to open that up. Okay, let me switch over to my blank canvas window capture here. Okay, all right, here's my blank page, window capture, uh, and you'll see it's just blank. This is kind of where you'll start, all right? And then you'll start adding onto this, you'll drawing onto this blank canvas, the stage, right? I know right off the bat, I told you, because I told you, that the, that the theater from wall to wall is 72 feet, right? 
So what I'm going to do is go up here to insert. Why is this not showing? It's just blank up here. That's dumb. Okay, let me go back here. Um, see if I can't fix this. <clears throat> I apologize. Let me fix my window capture here. I'll just go back to this document. Uh, okay, so the, here's the Howard Payne ground plan again. Uh, in order to draw in Publisher, right, I'm going to go to Insert, right, and it opens up, and of course you can't even see it. Why? This is frustrating me. Maybe if I refresh this. Uh, Well, shoot. Okay. Um, this is frustrating. Home, design, mailings. <laughs> it just says more blank page sizes. That's not what it says here. On insert, you're going to see an option for shapes. So what I can see in my window, which you can't see here, it's being covered up, is shapes. All right? I drop down and I'm going to draw a rectangle. Right? So drawing rectangles and that sort of thing. Um, Gosh, I'm going to have to redo a video helping to show you how to do this, so I'm so sorry. But all this to say, to get started, um, the design program that I'm using, that I use, is Publisher. You can use any drawing program on your computer. Um, as long as you can draw boxes, lines, uh, as long as you can draw like curves, as long as you can put a text box in, that drawing program will work. Um, I use Publisher, like I said, simply because it's so widely available on campus. Um, if I were using an AutoCAD program, so a specialized actual design program, you might not have access to that. The reason why you use Publisher is because it's everywhere. Uh, I've said that many times. Hopefully that, this is making sense. <laughs> uh, I'm having technical difficulties today, and I apologize. Um, okay. Let me uh, go to what I wanted to talk about from chapter 7, chapter 8, and chapter 9 from your book. Now, you do not have to read these in depth. I'm not requiring them. Like I said, this isn't a design class. But there's some important information here. Starting with chapter 7, chapter 7 is the chapter on mechanical drafting, right? which is actually what we're doing. So the ground plan that we're doing is mechanical drafting. So this chapter talks about that. Now, when I was a student, I had to do my ground plan by hand. So I had a big piece of paper that I had to roll up and take with me everywhere in a little tube. Um, and I had drawing pencils and triangles, tri-square, like all of the drawing tools that you would need to do mechanical drawing. You, we don't need to do that now. Um, you are welcome to do this by hand if you want to. If you've got time, you're like, you know what, I want to draw this by hand. By all means, go ahead. Uh, but there are some tips and tricks from this chapter that I want you to be aware of um, and they are in figure 7.1 so figure 7.1 has an entire page of mechanical drawing so drafting and ground plan symbols and meanings right so the page looks like this 7.1 and it has all of these symbols so this Figure 7.1, you're going to want to mark in your book, copy to have saved because these are important. Um, I'm going to zoom in here and show you some of the important ones you need to know. View. Zoom. Okay. Let me just come right to the center here. Uh, first of all, this symbol that you see here, this C superimposed with an L, CL. If you haven't guessed already, that means center line. This line is the center line. This line that's intersecting it here, you'll notice if I scroll over, it goes from this edge of the proscenium over to this edge of the proscenium. That line is called the set line. All right? Some people call it the plaster line set or plaster line. Um, so center line and plaster line. 
These are very important navigation lines for stagecraft. Um, so center line, probably you figured this out already. What does center line mean? Center line is the halfway point between the proscenium. It divides the stage vertically in half, okay? The center line divides the stage vertically in half. So you already know this, the distance from here to here is 32 feet, or 16 inches in a half scale, half inch scale drawing. So where does the center line go? 32 divided by two, 16 inch, 16 feet, right? Or eight inches from either side. So it's eight inches from here to here. It's eight inches from here to here, right? That is the center line. Um, the center line, let me select it, and I'm going to go to Format Auto Shape. Again, you aren't seeing any of this. Gosh darn it. This is very frustrating. Uh, man. Here we go. Um, I'm switching over to the Format Auto Shape. So this is the format page, the format window for this line. The color is black. You can't see my arrow. Here we go. The color is black. Um, it, it has 0% transparency. I want you to notice this number right here. Width, 0.5 points. So this is line weight. In mechanical drawing, line weight is very important. Half point, right? So 0.5 points on a line width or line weight means that it's an imaginary line. What this means is that if you walked on stage, there's no object there that is the center line. It is an imaginary line, okay? So it's half weight. And then I want you to notice the dash type. So this little drop down thing, I can choose dash type, and of course you're not seeing the drop down because Windows, thank you so much, OBS. Anyway, the dash type for the center line is dash dot dash dot dash dot that is always the line style for the center line dash dot dash dot dash dot okay and 0.5 weight I'm gonna close out of that let me go back to my window capture here and get uh this is okay so for center line dash dot dash dot half point weight and it has the CL superimposed in it and if you're wondering how I made this CL, it's literally just two text box. So I made one text box that has a letter C, one text box that has a letter L, and then I put it on top of there. Um, okay, let's talk about the plaster line. I'm gonna zoom back here and in here. So this plaster line or set line, that is the line, the, again, it's an imaginary line that separate, that's the edge of the proscenium. Um, let me do format auto shape. So what I'm doing here to get to the format auto shape is right clicking and going to format auto shape. You can't see it, unfortunately, because of the way window capture works on this. So it's frustrating. Uh, and I'll show you again in format auto shape my window here. Uh, so this is format auto shape for our plaster line or set line. Again, color is black, transparency zero. The weight here, again, 0.5 half of a point in weight. The dash type is different than the center line. The center line is dash dot, dash dot. The set line is dash, 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 long dashes, okay? And that is the difference between those two styles. Both of them half point weight. Okay, I'm gonna close that. Let me get my window capture back out here. Yeah, this is exhausting, okay. Um, now I want you to look at this. Uh, this is one of the proscenium walls. Okay, it goes from here to here. Now I have to know the measurement of how long that is, right? In fact, I put it over here in my text box. Um, I think it's here. No, it's not there. Uh, okay. 
So what I have to do here is go into Format Auto Shape and see its size, uh, which you I will email you the correct size so you'll know what it is. Uh, anyway, so this box here is the proscenium wall on the stage left side. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is right click on it, click on Format Auto Shape, and then I need to go into Window Capture and get the right window for you here. Okay. And here's the format auto shape for that wall. First of all, the fill, right? So when it is a wall, so it's actually a solid object that has like thickness to it that you cannot pass through, right? You will use these, this fill, this type of a fill, this diagonal hash mark fill, right? Notice this here, the weight is one point. Right? So the one point line weight means that it's a solid object, right? that if you're walking around on stage you would run into it. So from a ground plan view, it's very important to note in line weight the difference between an imaginary line and a real line. Okay, So one point line there. Um, and not dashed, it's a solid line. So no dash, one point line weight. And the fill on this is this uh, dash, this horizontal uh, diagonal, diagonal slash mark. Okay. Um, and man, this is so much easier to do in person. I'm so sorry. This is not showing you what I need it to show you. Uh, I will just go around now and show you the rest of these things. So what I have here is curtains. Okay. These wiggly lines are our curtains, and that is I, I made as a heavier line, right, to indicate that they are curtains. Um, and, oops, come back. Got our curtains over here. I want you to notice our doorway, how I put the doorway in here. So this is the stage right proscenium wall. Again, this is a, this is a box, so just a square. And I did that by going to Insert, draw a rectangle, right? And I drew a rectangle here the size that it needed to be. And then I went to Format Auto Shape, gave it that kind of a fill, made sure it had a one point line weight, and then put it in the right place. Let me get rid of that. Uh, the doorway is its own little box. Right? So I made this door here to indicate where the stage right proscenium door is. And then this that shows the shutter is a line. Now it's important in Stagecraft when reading documents to indicate which way a door opens. Right? Does the door open onto stage or off stage? Right? So this line could be going this way. It could be going this way. Right? This would be a very different setup than what I have. But the actual door is set up like this. That is how those doors are. And on the opposite side of the stage again, you see I show the shutter there, which way it opens. Okay. Uh, let me show you the stairs real quick. So this is a step unit, and those are the size. So this is actually to scale, right? This is a four foot wide step unit, and each step is nine inches deep, right? Now I did not indicate on here how many steps that is. I'm going to scroll down here, but so that you can figure it out and show you these steps here. So these steps here are on the front of the stage, going down into the auditorium. Right here I have a circle with a number in it that says two feet. What that means is that this rectangle, so the stage, is two feet tall. Okay? If I have steps coming down here, right, that indicates that there's three steps, so you would divide two feet or 24 inches by three, so that would tell you the height for the stairs. I didn't actually include it there. Um, so this is the apron, stage right apron. All right, proscenium wall again. Grand drape here in the open position. We have a, 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 a teaser here, a drape leg. This is what I call our center-ish center -ish curtain because it's not actually in the center of the stage. And then two more teasers here, or tormentors, not teasers, right? Um, you'll notice I do not have in this drawing uh, the teasers that go across the stage at the top, but I have these bars. So this bar indicates the lighting position. You, in your drawing, do not have to have these bars. Right? That's not important for you. I include it uh, because when people come and it says here second electric, 
first electric. If you've had stage lighting, you'll know what those means, what those mean. And I've labeled them here: center ish traveler, grand drape, right? Second electric, third electric. And the back wall here is where the psych is. So I didn't even include the psych. I just kind of built it in as a uh, as part of the wall, right? Uh, and I included the double load-in door here uh, that's 8 foot by 8 foot, so I included that. Uh, let me zoom out. You may be feeling overwhelmed right now about this, uh, but really, let me break it down for you. All that this is, is lines and boxes, right? Text box, if you know how to draw a line on a computer, if you have a program where you can draw a box, a square and edit the size of it, um, edit its placement and all of that, you can do this and we will work on it together um, in, in whether it's in Publisher or whichever drawing tool. Um, and it might work better to do some zoom, uh, some zoom sessions on this and we'll work that out as we go. But uh, this is a ground plan. Uh, okay, a couple important things to remember then. The plaster line or the set line, this line right here, half half of a weight, right? So 0.5 in weight. Center line goes down the center of the stage, right? And superimpose CL over the top, and it's dash dot dash dot. Plaster line or set line dash dash dash. Um, the uh, the weight of solid objects is a one point line. So on your proscenium, on your stairs, on the edge of the stage, right? All of those lines are going to be one point weight. Uh, let me talk about this circle right here and this one over here. These are what we call extreme sight line positions. So in the actual Howard Payne Theater, this is the extreme, the most house right seat that you can sit in. On this one, this is the most house left seat you can sit in on the front row, right? So those are our extreme sight lines. The reason why this is important, I'll show you, let me zoom out a little bit more here, whole page. Uh, let me get a little bit closer than that. Okay, the reason why this is important is if I'm drawing a set or I'm putting a set onto this stage, um, I need to be able to see what the audience will be able to see from where they are. So I'm going to insert a line here, and I'm going to just start from the center of this thing, and I'll show you. So someone sitting here has this angle of a view, and you can see what they can see, right? So they can see, like, straight back into the wings here, right? That's why it's so important in our theater to make sure these, these uh, curtains are always, like, like, paged out, like fluffed open as much as possible, because someone can see right back into there from these extreme sight lines. So there's one extreme sight line. And then from the other side, do a line. So I'll show you from here, same thing. Extreme sight line would show you where they would be able to see, what they could see around and that sort of thing. Um, can they see through a door? Can they see... Um, through a gap in the stage that you didn't realize that they could see. So th that's why extreme sight lines are important. Okay, now I've been using this word a lot, but a ground plan is a top-down view of the stage. Right? A ground plan is a top-down view of the stage. An elevation view is a front view of the stage. So imagine you're sitting in the audience, looking at the stage, that is an elevation view, okay? A model is a three-dimensional three actual model, physical model of the, of the set, of the stage. Um, and a, uh, and a um, digital model is the same thing, only it only exists on the computer, so it's only a digital model. I mostly use digital models. Um, I may have a session, if I can get it to work, of how to use SketchUp and how I make my digital models, and you can give that a go if you want for some extra credit I usually offer. Um, and it can be fun to learn how to use that stuff in, we'll cover that in another video. Um, okay, so those are the two main ones I want you to be familiar with is ground plan, top down view, elevation view, front view. You're not going to necessarily be doing an elevation view in real life for this class, 
um, as in a scale elevation view, but you will be doing some sketches. So let's talk about your sketches. Uh, Laurel, I got a sketch from you already and it's looking good. Um, what I want you to do uh, for sketches, this brings me to chapter eight. So if you've got your book with you, I want you to flip over to, uh, actually chapter eight is perspective drawing. Um, and again, if this was a design class, we, I would be walking you through all of these exercises. It teaches you how to draw a perspective drawing from a scale ground plan, and it really is a fascinating process. I had to do this by hand. Um, how to do stuff like this and this. I don't know if you can see it very well. How to do drawings like that. You'll see up on the top here, top part of this picture, is a ground plan, and they've transferred the ground plan into a three-dimensional elevation view. Uh, chapter 8 walks you through how to do that. And it really is a cool process. It's something we do in design class. It takes some practice. Uh, and then, of course, there's just freehand uh, three-dimensional drawing, uh, which some people are very good at. Uh, and it just takes practice, just getting better at it as you go. Here's another example um, of, of what Chapter 8 covers. On the top here, you see a ground plan. On the bottom here, you see an elevation, right? For this class, you're not going to have to do an elevation drawing, but I do want you to do sketches. And that's one of the things you're going to start on. Um, so the next thing you're going to do, the next assignment for you, is to, is to start on some sketches. I want you to, using your play analysis, start drawing some sketches of what you see on stage. Um, this brings us over to chapter 9. Uh, figure 9.5, here's some simple sketches of some scene design stuff. Sketches are almost always elevation view. The idea of a sketch is in your mind as the designer, as you're reading the plays, you're imagining all of the, all of the things that the play needs and how to help tell this story, right? What would, what would be uh, great ideas for uh, being able to tell this story? Um, you want to view it from the audience's perspective. So when somebody's sitting in the audience, what do they see? So to hand draw it and be able to draw it out from the audience's perspective. Um, one thing I want you to focus on as you begin sketching is details. Um, don't, don't try not to draw just like stick figure couch, stick figure chairs, stick figure table, stick figure pe people, doors. I really want you to start considering details. Right? Your drawing should have more lines in it and not less. Um, it's something you'll notice in these again. Is how many lines there are. Right? There's a lot of details in these. And you may be telling yourself, well, I can't do that. Um, you can. It just takes practice. Um, it really does. Um, I, I ask people all the time. Um, if you could draw, if you, if you had the ability to draw well, would you want to? And almost everybody wants to be able to draw well. The problem is, is that some point in your past, when you were a child growing up, when you transitioned from being a child into an adolescent, you suddenly developed the ability to recognize good art from bad art. And you went from drawing almost anything, some like blurry scribble on a page, and be like, "Look, mommy, it's wonderful. It's a, it's a, it's a clown riding a roller coaster or whatever," and be like, "Oh yeah, it looks so good, honey." Until one day you tried to draw something and you realized it didn't look like what you wanted it to look like, and you tell yourself, "Well, I'm bad at drawing," and then you gave up on drawing. All kids love to draw. All kids love to draw until they reach a point in age where suddenly they're able to distinguish between good drawings, it looks like what I want it to look like, and bad drawings, it doesn't look like it. And then you give up on it. If you had, as a child, got to that point where you realized that your drawing didn't look like what you wanted it to look like, and you, you know, rather than giving up on it, you had just kept practicing it, you would be good at it today. So what we have to do is back up, tell yourself that you can draw, it just takes practice, right? So this is drawing therapy. What I want you to do for this week is to be drawing, right? Get yourself a pad of paper, 
get yourself um, a little drawing pad if you can, right? Um, I know it's hard to get to the store right now, but um, if you can, find just a sheaf of papers, of blank pages, and begin drawing. And what you do is you use your eyes. Most people try to draw with their hand, right? And so what you do is you try to move your hand in the right way. Here's what I want you to do. Drawing exercise number one, if you're telling yourself you're bad at drawing, is don't look at what your hand is doing. Take your piece of paper and put it on the, on the table. Take your pencil in your hand, right? And look at what you wanna draw, a chair or a tree or a person or anything, and do not look at what you're drawing and draw it, right? And force yourself not to look at it. Try to connect your mind, your eye, to your hand movement. And, and that is the beginning of good drawing. And you, you might be like, no, that's wrong, because when I looked at the drawing, it was absolutely terrible. It's worse than I drew before. But, and that, that will probably be true. But what you're doing is you're starting to line up your eyes with your hand. Um, and you are capable of doing this. Some people will say, well, Dr. Ewan, I'm just not one of those like creative right brain persons. Is it right or is it left? Anyway, I'm not one of those brain people. I'm like, you have a left brain or a, a right brain. I can't remember which. It's in there. You're just not used to using it. Um, and I'll give you a for example. Your eyes are connected to your hands um, if you can drive a car. Right? So if you've ever been driving uh, down the road and after you've been driving for about five minutes, you suddenly realize that you haven't been paying attention to what you're doing. Like your mind's been wandering somewhere else and you're like, wait, how did I even get here? Right? Uh, it's 20 miles from my house to early. And sometimes I'll get to early and realize I did not pay attention to hardly any of the road. But I got there safely and I obeyed all the traffic laws doing it. The reason for that is that my brain went into automatic right brain mode, took over, and my hand-eye coordination totally took over. That means I am capable of hand-eye coordination without thinking about it, without having to control it. That is where good drawing comes from, is the ability for your hand to follow what your eye sees without having to like control it, right? Um, and that's a skill uh, that if we were meeting in class, uh, some of you may have done this with me before, I do some exercises on encouraging this, this really um, right-brained, drawing exercise. I'm pretty sure it's right brain. Anyway, you can draw well, it just takes practice. Um, so this is the next part of your process. I want you to do three or four sketches and I want you to keep them all, no matter how bad they are. I want you to send them to me. And what I want to try to prove to you is that from your first sketch to your last sketch, you will have improved at drawing. Uh, you will see uh, just in that little amount of practice, uh, maybe let's make it three drawings. I want you to do three drawings of the scene that you see on stage um, and draw them, draw it three times, right? Each time improving, adding detail, uh, look at the drawing and say, does this look like an interesting stage picture? Ask yourself. If I sat down to watch this play as an audience member, would I be interested in what I see on stage? Would I be like, hmm, I wonder what they're gonna use that for. I can't wait to see somebody you know, come through that doorway or appear on that balcony. Um, this is one of my favorite things about scene design that I remember so well from when I was a kid. Some of the first plays that I would go and see, and you may have had this experience, I would go to see a play and you see the set on stage and there's a door here, or there's, there's a window, there's like a platform, there's a balcony or something like that. And throughout the whole play as a kid, I remember this, I'm like, ooh, I can't wait to see somebody appear on that balcony. I want, I want to see what they're used for. When is somebody going to come through that door? Um, all of those things are part of the scene design. Try to make areas of the stage that cause anticipation for their use. Um, I actually build that build and I design my sets and build them with that in mind uh, this kind of anticipation to see somebody come down those stairs right uh, and and um, I build that into the design uh, if you think back to let's say um, she stoops to conquer right from the moment the audience sat down in this in the theater they could see the set 
You can see the platforms. They could see that the platform continued behind the fire, the fireplace and the balconies and the stairs that came down. And I, what I was thinking is I knew if I sat down, I'd be anticipating seeing, thinking, when are they gonna use this? Like, what's that gonna be used for? How's that gonna be used? And then being so gratified when it's used in a really neat way like using the fireplace as the screen, right, for when Zeke and Laurel were hiding behind it uh, to, for the uh, screen scene. Um, those type of uses are really great. And even in this little play, Attic Treasure, uh, there are ways you can build that kind of, like, interesting look into it. What I'm trying to say is I don't want to look at it and be like, I'm already bored with the play. I don't want to look at a set and think, Eh, there's nothing interesting. There's no levels. There's no like, like secret nooks or crannies. There's no. There's nothing that I'm like. Huh. I wonder what that's going to be used for. Um, and and I want you to think about that in your design. Basically, I want you to want to see a play on this set. Okay. So sketches. That's the next thing to do. Um, again, I apologize that this isn't working well. Please send me your questions and problems. Um, you, you're not going to have yet the measurements for the stage, so I'm going to send those to you after I get your sketches. So when I start getting some sketches, I'm going to send you the measurements for the stage so that we can start working on this. Um, if you're overwhelmed by this ground plan thing right now, <clears throat> just wait. It's going to be fine, and we'll walk through it. I'm going to figure out a way to walk you through this a little bit better without this stupid more blank page sizes thing on here. Um, and we'll get that working. Uh, but what I need to know from you is, do you, A, do you have Microsoft Publisher, or B, do you have another program that you can use to draw on? A very simple drawing program will work. Um, you just need to be able to send it to me as a JPEG or a PDF or something like that so that I can see it and I can measure to see if it's to scale. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for now and encourage you to start drawing. All right, have a good day.